Hello everyone. The clock's counting down to our first broadcast for our season opening concert of the music of Bach, Vivaldi, and Mendelssohn. And I'm getting ready to go over to the hall to do our recordings with the fine musicians of the Peoria Symphony Orchestra and our guest soloist Charles Yang. But I thought I'd take a few moments to enjoy this incredible fall day, have a little coffee, and have a short pre-concert discussion with you before I go. As I was thinking about what to do for this uh, introduction or this pre-concert video, if you will, um, I was thinking that we've been doing pre-concert preparation for you online uh, almost for 10 days now. Uh, we, from the Guild Musical Monday to a fantastic backstage pass from Todd Pilon to, uh, with WTVP to musical encounters to our musical phrases and this program which is called Upbeat and many of you probably understand the play of words the upbeat in orchestral terminology means the beat before we play the music before the music starts so it's our preparation that final moment of preparation before we deliver the music. But as I'm sitting out here, I also want to tell you about what's been going on to make this possible. There's an amazing team of people. Um, there's an amazing set of collaborators. And uh, I have been uh, edified by the work that so many people have done to make this happen. So as I drink my coffee, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that have been online and the music that we're doing, but I want you to take a walk with me and learn about some of the people behind the scenes for this amazing production. I think this is some of the Peoria Symphony's finest work. From the playing of the musicians, to the performing of our soloist, to the production team, to the staff, everybody has put in a heroic effort to make this happen. So let's review, first of all, what's been going on during the week. First and foremost, if you're a subscriber, You've probably already received this fantastic season magazine, which talks about our entire season. I have to commend the entire staff, but especially our marketing director, May, for the effort to put this together. I have been hoping for something like this for many years here, and I think it's a fantastic way to present the season to you. And it's, uh, it's amazing because you can get your program notes beforehand and you can read them so you can pay attention to the music uh, that you've already learned about. I think it's a fantastic book. I hope you enjoy it. And if you don't have one, I hope you request one from the symphony. The first new online initiative that we introduced this past couple weeks is Musical Phrases. And it's a occasional series where I discuss terms and phrases that are associated with an upcoming concert. Hello and welcome to Musical Phrases, a series where we explore terms and phrases associated with upcoming performances of the Peoria Symphony Orchestra. Many of you may have noticed that the first piece on our September 26 broadcast is a Sinfonia by Felix Mendelssohn. So what does Symphonia mean? Is it a symphony? Not quite. Symphonia, the word, comes from the 17th and 18th centuries and it was used as an overture for operas. Sometimes it was also an interlude in operas. It was also used uh, as a kind of a short piece at the beginning of a suite of music. Bach often used the term. And basically a symphonia is a piece that is kind of fast, slow, fast. So it's a little bit like a small symphony 
in later years, but in the Baroque era, where its uh, origin is, is actually it's just a short introductory piece or an interlude or some kind of um, um, interjection into the main work of the music. So when you hear Mendelssohn's Sinfonia, you can think of it as a kind of uh, look back where he was writing just a little short piece to start a program, almost as if the entire program was the opera itself. On Mondays, the week before a concert, the Peoria Symphony Guild holds what we call Musical Mondays. Now, in this time of social distancing, of course, we can't enjoy their cookies and coffee beforehand, but we can do Musical Mondays uh, virtually. So this past Monday, we did our first virtual Musical Monday, and we discussed all the composers and the concerts and you can still see their Musical Monday on their Facebook page. The second movement, Andante, has such a pleading pathos about it. It reminds me very much of Bach's Erbarmer dich, mein Gott, from the St. Matthew Passion, which means, have mercy on me, God. I think you can hear Bach's influence on Mendelssohn in this piece. A series that's exclusive to Peoria Symphony Orchestra subscribers is called Musical Encounters. This series allows us to look at the music being performed and the artists appearing on an upcoming concert in a little more depth. And I like to think of it as the inside scoop about what's coming up for the Peoria Symphony Orchestra. Hello and welcome back to Musical Encounters. This segment is entitled, If You Could See What I Hear. And in it, we will be exploring the musical poetic images that are evoked in Vivaldi's Four Seasons. He writes them throughout the score, and I thought it would be fun just to give you a quick rundown of all the images that you can imagine uh, as you listen to our broadcast on September 26th. Let's get started. wonderful new series called Peoria Symphony Orchestra's Backstage Pass debuted this week and it's a wonderful way to kind of get an insight into what's going on at rehearsals or thoughts from myself or the guest artists. Here's a few excerpts from Charles Yang's comments as well as my own. Playing with Peoria Symphony Orchestra is, is uh... I mean, they're like family to me now. It's, I think this is my fourth time I've played with them. Um, but every iteration I've done has been something unique. And this might be the fifth time, actually. It just feels so good to play with live musicians and people I know and new faces also in the orchestra. Um, but I've always had a great time here, you know? My first time I came here, we premiered a concerto. Uh, we've done Corleano here, and my band Time for Three has been here. And I just everyone here has been family to me. So it's good to be back. <laughs> this rehearsal has been great because we're trying out new things, um, you know, uh, 
George Deluto, uh, the maestro, and I uh, have just been um, going back and forth on new ideas of how can we... He even wrote a little uh, solo in there uh, that, that's not in there, and it works really well. And, and I, I looked at it and I was like, oh yeah, let's try this out. So we're really open about it, and, and that's what's fun about rehearsals. <laughs> A lot of people think that rehearsals are about correcting things, and that's really not the case. Uh, you bring people together, we've kind of all looked at the music. Now, you know, there may be some mistakes here or there that we, we fix, but that's not really the point of the rehearsal. So sometimes you can think of the rehearsal like that game that, you know, we used to play as kids where every, you told a secret to the person next to you and that person told a secret to somebody next to them and then it came around, it was completely different. Everybody's got their version of this music in them. So the rehearsal really is the, the time we have to bring everybody's version together. And it's the, my job to kind of mold that into a kind of vision for a piece, uh, for an interpretation that's unified, that um, creates a compelling performance for the listener. Now I'd like you to consider what went into this performance. To look at, learn about, and be thankful for all of the people involved in the PSO organization as well as our collaborators. First of all, the musicians that you see listed here faced an incredible challenge of first, not having played together for over six months, Second, to have to play at a social distance of six feet or more while wearing masks. And this sounds already daunting, but think about it. This means that they are so far apart that they have to overcome the challenges of the delayed sound that reaches them from their colleagues in order for all of us to play together. And I have to say that I thought the orchestra outdid itself. Um, the hall where you perform is always part of your instrument. It's the part of the instrument of the orchestra, if you will. And so we were very fortunate to be playing in Grace where the acoustics allow musicians that are socially distanced, even though they may feel isolated. And one of them said to me after rehearsal that I feel like I'm the only one on stage playing. So the hall allowed all of those individuals to come together, where normally we would be sitting closer together and be more involved in a kind of chamber music sense for this size orchestra. They overcame the challenges of the distance and I was astounded at the result. So if you know any of them, if you see any of them, please thank them because I, could not have imagined a better job being done by any orchestra. Now let's talk about the staff.